Hey everyone, I'm going to show you the basic functionality of dragging and dropping in Godot, the built-in way to do it. It's really kind of counterintuitive because when we imagine dragging and dropping, we think that we're literally picking something up, moving it, and putting it somewhere else, and so we kind of want to do that in the back end. But in the back end, it's actually very different. I'm going to show you what I mean, and I'm also going to try to make it as generic as possible so that you can adapt it to whatever your needs are. That was the problem I ran into while trying to learn this, is often people show very specific examples of how to do it in a very specific way, and it just doesn't work for my game. So here is the most basic way to do it. With this instruction, you'll be able to adapt it to your game specifically. So instead of visualizing I'm picking something up, moving it, and dropping it somewhere else, instead visualize you're creating that illusion, but behind the scenes you're just transferring data between similar nodes. In this case, I'm moving information between texture button nodes, just moving the colors actually. So when I pick up a blue and move it to the green position, all I'm doing is actually just saying, okay, this one's green now and this one's blue. I never actually move the node to that position, I'm literally just changing the information stored in that position. So that's the way to visualize it, but let's see how to actually do it. There are three built-in functions in Godot, and they only work on control nodes. That's the green ones here. If you need to have other information being moved, you can always add children of different types of nodes underneath the control nodes, but these functions will only work on a control node. Each of these three functions are going to help you with a different stage of the drag and drop process. So the first one is get drag data. Then we have can drop data and last is drop data. You need all three to really make it work. So the first one is going to happen when you pick something up. So this is saying, all right, I'm picking up an item to drag. Can drop data is going to help you determine if you are at a valid place to drop. And then the last one is going to figure out what happens when you actually drop the item. Okay, so you're just saying, I'm dragging an item. Can I drop it here? And here's what I want you to do when I drop it. Get drag data is the first function and it's going to fire when you click and drag on a control node with this function in it. But you're going to want this function to do two things. It returns, I believe, a dictionary. So create a dictionary and then store whatever it is that you need to transfer to the new slot that you're going to be dropping this item. Okay, so this is going to be very dependent on your game. Don't follow this example exactly because here all I'm doing is literally just transferring the sprites for my texture button and the slot that my texture button is in. I have it structured so that they're in slots. You might need to structure it differently, again, depending on your game do some experimenting it's gonna it'll take a little bit of figuring out what exactly you need to pass but put it all here stick it in a dictionary the second thing that you're going to want to do in this function is create your drag preview that is the thing that creates the illusion that you're picking something up and putting it somewhere else it's the image that kind of follows your mouse while you drag there's a built-in way to do this but I don't recommend following the built-in way I would make your own in my case I literally just made my own I created a sprite I tilted it a little and changed the opacity and then I gave it some functionality to follow the mouse and then if I ever let go of the mouse button that's dragging and dropping, then it will delete itself. Then all you have to do is instance your drag preview. There's plenty of tutorials out there on how to instance. So in my case, again, I'm just passing in the texture to create the illusion that I've picked it up. So you can do something similar. Of course, adjust it to whatever your needs are. Put the functionality of that here in get drag data. The next function is can drop data. This function is going to fire whenever you're clicking and dragging already and then hover over a control node that has this function on it. The purpose of this function is to help you determine if the slot that you're hovering over is an appropriate slot to drop the item that you're carrying. In my case, I'm just returning true because any of the buttons that I can move can be moved to the position of any of the other buttons. But this could be extra helpful. For example, in an RPG, you can't put a sword in the helmet slot of your character loadout screen. And so you might want some logic in here to say, hey, no swords in helmet slots. So whatever logic you put in here can help you determine what can and can't be dropped in certain slots. I don't have any logic. In fact, I'm being a little cheaty and messing with the dictionary that you pass in because you can access that dictionary that you created in your first function. This is needed because you might want to know if the item you're carrying is a sword or if your item you're carrying is a helmet, for example, right? So you can add to or read from the dictionary that you created already. But it isn't recommended that you do what I did here. In fact, it's better if you simply put in the logic to determine if the slot that you're hovering over is the appropriate slot. Don't do what I did. I'm not a good example. The last last function is the easiest to understand, but the hardest to implement depending on your game. Drop data is going to fire if you're hovering over a valid slot as determined in the last function. So you're, you're dropping the item into a slot. That's when this function will fire. Whatever you want to happen at that point is what you put in this function. And it's going to depend again on your game. In my case, I'm literally just changing the sprites between the two buttons. But in your case, you might need to do something completely different. So like I said, this is the easiest to understand, but the hardest to implement. Good thing is 
is, you have access to that dictionary that you made. So whatever information that you stored in the first function can now be accessed here and moved around or changed, updated, whether it's locally or behind the scenes in some other script. That's the way I would do it. That's the way I actually did it in my game. But this is the function where something actually changes, assuming it's all appropriate. Quick recap, you have three functions that all work together. The first one is going to store the information that you want to transfer. And it's also going to generate the preview that creates the illusion that you're dragging and dropping. The next function is going to determine if the slot you're hovering over is an appropriate slot to drop the thing you're dragging. And drop data is going to actually make things happen once you actually drop whatever it is you're dragging. You can put all these functions together on the same node and just transfer information between them. Or you can do something similar to that and then just store all the information on the back end, kind of like I did in my own game. But it really is going to depend a lot on your game in particular. So sorry if this tutorial was a little more vague, it was really more of the concept of each of these functions and how you implement it is going to depend a lot on the needs of your game. But hopefully now you understand it. While I was trying to learn this, I wish I had someone to explain how these functions work the way I just did to you. So again, hopefully this was helpful to you. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. Thanks so much for watching. You have a beautiful day.